cataractcoach.com. Should we still do iris sphincterotomies? To help dilate small pupils, is this still a reasonable technique here? Now you see this patient has a small pupil, some sneaky that were there, already a little bit broken with the dilation drops. Here's a pair of going in, a little tripan blue. I don't do it this way. I like little tiny droplets of tripan blue placed under the iris. So when you expand the pupil, then you actually have stained iris because this is only going to stain in the part of the capsule that's exposed, right? Now here we're just making a main incision here, good. Put some HPMC inside the eyes, some viscoelastic. And now another paracentesis, okay. And you may want to go on the spatula and kind of break those sneaky, exactly. Those sneaky there, 360. That looks pretty reasonable. And going from the paracentesis to get a full 360, I like that too. Nice gentle sweeping there, that's great, good technique here. Now you can do some viscomedriasis and expand the pupil a little bit. There's some more viscoelastic. That's pretty reasonable. Now, okay, pupil stretching. A little stretching of the pupil. Maybe you don't need to do anything else, right? That looks pretty reasonable. Good pupil stretch here. All right. And now let's see more viscoelastic. I think a surgeon here is going to try to use, there we go, a B-hex ring. This is a pupil expansion ring, placing it inside the eye. And look at that. It breaks. It breaks. Now, in the notes here, the surgeon who sent the video said that was the only one in the whole center. So there's no other pupil expansion rings available. So what do you want to do here? Okay, maybe put iris hooks in. But if you don't have that either, what should you do? Now, in a case like this, I would just do the phaco. That's a big enough pupil. You can make the rexus under the iris, as we know. But in this case, the surgeon is going to elect to do some mini iris sphincterotomies using micro scissors to make multiple small cuts here at the pupil sphincter. So again, these sphincterotomies, look at that, help dilate the pupil. You can go through the para here, now go the other direction, do a full 360. Now, I really don't think this is a great technique if the patient's concerned with cosmesis or cosmetic appearance. Certainly, if you have a Beverly Hills patient here who's an actor or actress and is going to be on camera and they have light-colored irises as well, I don't know if I'd want to do this. Because as you can see here, now it does definitely expand. Look at that, it definitely works. But, hmm... Now you've got an irregular pupil margin there, and that's going to be permanent. There's no undoing this now. But again, perhaps this patient's really not that concerned about it, and that's okay. Then it's a reasonable technique here. Now, in doing this, you may actually prevent future meiosis or pupil contraction. So let's just see what's going to happen here. Getting the rex done. You can see the pupil keeps coming down. So here's where you may want to use a uh, different viscoelastic here to keep the pupil more expanded as you get the rex done. Now, my technique, of course, is to prolapse the lens out of the bag partially and have the iris hold the lens for you, right? Let's see what the surgeon's going to do here. Meanwhile, let me tell you about right around Our sister channel, so much great material. It's really an amazing resource. I encourage you, please check it out. Now, there you go. Nuke is kind of tilted up. I like that technique. Yeah, so very similar to what I end up doing. Looks very reasonable. And you take this out. And then the nucleus comes up pretty easy. Now, remember, at the end of these cases, when the pupil does not dilate so well, I like to lift up the iris to be sure. Once the eye wells in the bag and the eye is still full of viscoelastic, before removing viscoelastic, I like to lift up the iris to make sure that, one, the eye wells totally in the bag, and, two, to make sure that there's no retained lens material in the capsule bag. So that looks pretty good. And now let's take a look here. Probably switching to an IA Pro is going to be my best bet at this point. Yeah, I'd switch to the IA Pro. The last thing you want in this small pupil case is to have a broken capsule, especially when you have no other devices like iris hooks. So leave a comment below. Do you do iris sphincterotomy still? Is it a reasonable technique in your patient population, in your clinic? Let us know. We're all going to learn together here. Now, certainly it's a technique that does have usefulness. But again, I think the, you got to weigh the benefits versus the, you know, the you know, compromise here. And the compromise here is, of course, you're going to get a cosmetic defect here. You don't have the prettiest looking iris now. And so, again, here's using that technique with a second instrument to lift up the iris. I like that. Oh, a little bit of iris prolapse there. That's okay. Put some viscoelastic in. And then uh, not the best red reflex, huh? Maybe you think there's some tripan blue escape back there. Maybe there's some zonulopathy or something. Let's get that lens in the bag. Now, here, you definitely need to make sure this is in the bag a little bit better. So, I'd yeah, dial it in the bag, but then definitely lift the iris up and check. Let me see. Are you going to do that? Please, let's double check. Lens is rotating around pretty nicely. Oh, there's a good red reflex. Maybe it was just the camera issues. And now let's lift up the iris and check. No, that's what I'd want to do here. But again, this looks pretty good. It looks like the lens is in the bag. Only way to know for sure, again, for me, is to lift up that iris and let me see that rexus and let me make sure that it's behind. But great technique here for this surgeon. Obviously works well in your hands. Beautiful surgery. Patient, I'm sure, is quite happy. 
Now, in a case like this, I'd also put some intracameral preservative-free triamcillo inside the eye just because all that iris manipulation can actually cause more inflammation in the post-op period. So in order to prevent uh, too much inflammatory response, I think a little intracameral preservative-free triamcillo, maybe 0.5 milligrams or maybe 1 milligram would be fantastic. Anyway, nice case. Please leave a comment below. We can all learn together. Have you ever done iris sphincterotomies? Do you still advocate for that technique? And also remember, you can submit your video too. You go to cataractcoach.com. There's full instructions how to submit your video to me. But remember, we get like 50, 60 videos a week.